Hi, I'm Sean McVeigh with Sean's Outdoor Adventures, and I want to welcome you to this episode on how to hunt whitetail deer. The focus of this video is on how to stalk whitetail deer, which is not an easy thing to do. So in this situation, I'm actually hunting farm areas. So that means I'm actually coming into the woods for an evening hunt through a farm field. I'm expecting the deer to come up to the field. However, in this situation, I was able to spot a deer when I was moving to my location. And here's an important tip I want to give you right off the bat, because a lot of times we have in our mind that we're going to go to our tree stand and get up in our tree stand and hunt. However, if you spot a deer on your way to the tree stand, it no longer becomes a sitting hunt. It's a stalk. The stalk is on. And that's what happened in this situation. So I was slowly making my way down through the woods to my stand location, and I saw a deer down from me, down this hillside. The first thing I did was freeze. The wind was in my favor, which was perfect. I was like, awesome. And that is one of the keys for still hunting. You need the wind to be in your favor. The best case scenario is the wind is blowing directly from the deer to you. There are situations where you can get by with a crosswind. However, if the wind swirls, you're out of luck, usually. The stalk itself took about 15 minutes to move. I just had to get about 25 yards down through the woods to get a better shot on the deer. But I'm just going to speed it up here for you and give you a little glimpse here and there as I do the stalk. The deer is bedded down, quartering toward me and facing me, so my options were limited. At this point, I, tr I didn't know exactly how to play the situation. I drew back and tried to grunt with my voice to see if the deer would stand up. Yeah. As you can see, the deer did not respond at all to the grunt. So I eased down and started to brainstorm on how I could manage to get the shot off. Now my footing wasn't really that good and I needed to get a little bit better of an angle. So I moved down about three more yards. When I got to within about 18 yards of the deer, I didn't have too many options. Because if th at this point, if it heard me or saw me, it, I, it wasn't going to stand up and just look at me to figure out what I was. It was probably going to take off and run. So I basically needed to get a shot off without her seeing me. Now I had gotten into a position, the deer was bedded down, laying slightly quartered toward me and facing me, so I was watching the deer's ear as it was sticking out from behind the tree. And I waited for the deer to turn its head a little bit, I drew back and leaned out just a little bit around the tree to get a shot right in tight behind the shoulder. And I really had to thread the needle here because my shot into the vitals is only about an inch to the side of the tree where the deer is behind. Yeah, baby. I can't believe that. Oh, that was so exhilarating, guys, girls, everybody out there. To stalk up on a deer like that is so rewarding. I got within 18 yards of that deer. Let me show you what I did. I came in 
through the field here and um, I kept getting this this feeling like the whole time I was getting ready I was like I should put my video camera and my little one on my hat because I, I just was getting this feeling like I needed to be ready so I fought with myself a little bit about it I was like I'm gonna do it I put it on I got up to the edge of the woods here and let me turn the camera and um, I look down there, there's an old logging road down there. And uh, let's see if I can zoom in on it. It's right down there. And uh, <laughs> I looked and I saw a deer. I mean, it was a doe, which is what I want. She was standing broadside. I didn't have my rangefinder out or anything. I even thought about getting that out in advance too, but I was like, ah, I won't worry about it. So I see her and she looks a little bit far for a quality shot. So I wait, and then she, I thought she moved toward me, and I thought she was gonna come up the hill from where I'm at. So I knocked an arrow, I got all ready, I turned the video camera on, stuff like that, and I, I wasn't seeing her. So after about five, 10 minutes, I thought, the wind is blowing hard, not real hard, maybe 10, 15 miles an hour in my direction, and if I just take my time, I might be able to get up on her. I stepped through these sticks here as quietly as I could. So I came here and I had to get through this. I took a step, I put a, a foot in there, brought the other one over, and I actually had to pick these up and sneak through. So I was like, man, I, I, I don't have good footing here. So I had to make it down about three more yards. At this point, I was about here and I was about 18 yards. And I stepped out from the side of this tree a little bit. And as I was moving, I could see her nose. So I couldn't risk going any farther. And then I slipped the shot. Actually, it was, I think it was this tree, right? I think she was bedded right down there. I slipped the shot down through. And um, I was fiddling with my arrows trying to get a second shot. And by the time I was able to get the arrow out and knocked, uh, she had taken off down through the woods and then I took a little stalk mission after her to see if I could get another shot But I couldn't see her then I went and checked out the the bed where she was at and there's good blood and there's good blood down through the woods So I'll show you that real quick. Here. She was right here. Here's the bed. You can see there's blood there and blood up in there But folks, I am pumped up I'll tell you, if you are ever getting tired of hunting and you're just not finding the excitement, try stalking deer. It is so exciting to be on their level, to be really, I mean, really up against their senses to the utmost degree. It's just, it's just amazing. I enjoyed that so much. Here's an important point that I want to bring up right here, and that is this deer actually bedded down on the only flat spot on this ridge side. What it was doing was it was getting closer to the food source and then bedding down waiting till dark or closer to dark. And this second deer that I saw while I was tracking the first one, the one I got a shot at, was doing the exact same thing. Keep that in mind. Sometimes if you're going to go set up in your hunting spot, there could be deer that are moving in closer and bedding down in that staging area waiting for get to get closer to dark. So sometimes, and you got to know the deer that you're hunting, sometimes you need to get to your stand even earlier than you normally would in order to get in position before the deer get there. So after that, we got onto the blood trail and we maybe went about 80, 90, 100 yards, something like that, to the bottom of the hill. And you can probably see back earlier in the footage, down at the bottom of that hill, there's actually train tracks. So there's a lot of stone. You can just kind of make that out just in the, in the bottom of the picture. Well, right when we got to the bottom of the hill, there was the deer. There's dinner. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. 
Well, folks, I want to thank you for tuning in to this episode on how to hunt whitetail deer. And with a little bit of a focus on how to stalk whitetail deer, obviously I haven't covered every single thing you could possibly cover when it comes to stalking deer. But I just wanted to give you a few ideas and show you how I was able to be successful on a stalk. In particular, I was able to keep the wind in my favor. And as I, I was able to keep a tree between me and the deer throughout the stalk, which enabled me to get close and then seal the deal. So keep that in mind when you're out in the woods, especially if you're going to or coming from your tree stand, don't give up on the hunt. There could be a deer waiting for you around the next tree. Until next time, take care and God bless.